Pinckney and Marquez. And both of these fighters are straight ahead fighters. And this is a kind of fight that we could get some real fireworks in this evening. Tonight we'll see Pinckney in the uh, black trunks, the all black trunks, and that's Juan Manuel Marquez in the black with the red stripe. I guess if uh, Marquez is in fact Mexico's hottest prospects, he will have to prove it tonight. He is facing a guy that uh, has faced some of the best fighters in the world, and like his manager uh, Jim Waldrop says, he will face anybody. Here at ringside, I'm Rich Murata along with Fernando Paramo. Our partner, Tom Kelly, of course, who is our normal uh, sidekick here on the KCAL Fight Night uh, program. Well, Tom is a man who wears many hats, of course, and he was wearing his football helmet, I guess you could say, this afternoon. He has taken that helmet off, and he is on his way here, and we will be joining, and we'll be joining us here at ringside uh, before too long. So we'll wait for Tom, and uh, Fernando and I will hold court until then. And already, I believe, uh, we've seen some crisp punching by the two here. Marcus had a tremendous left hook. That was the best punch of the uh, night. But oh. one of the things that he's going to find out about uh, Pinkney is the fact that uh, he won't go down easily. Marquez's last fight was July 8th at the Great Western Forum. A, an easy 10-round victory over uh, Freddy Cruz, who basically showed up but did not show up to fight. And they ran all night. It was really kind of a dreadful bout. But the one before that, the uh, April 29th bout at the pond, a knockout in eight rounds of Julio Hervasio, the former WBA 118-pound champion by Marquez. He just did everything right in that fight. It was a, a flawless performance, and he's starting off well here this evening, Fernando. Marquez is a guy that can fight not only coming into the uh, opponent, but also counter uh, punching. And uh, that's what he said he was going to do. He was going to try to box from the outside. He was going to try to use his reach advantage and his better boxing skills against Pigney. Pigney, as I mentioned, coming off a big upset win over previously undefeated Goody Espadas. That came June 10th in Phoenix, and he just took uh, Espadas apart in uh, seven rounds. Espadas, in fact, quit on the stool between rounds on his own. His cornermen were trying to urge him to go out, but Espadas, uh, I thought, made a mature decision that night and said, you know, I'll come back to fight another night. And Pigney, we should also point out, five fights... Before that, knocked out Junior Jones in three rounds, a former world champion. So this is a guy who really can fight. His record most misleading at 22-21 and two, but that's because he got off to a horrible start in his career. He only won one of his first 10 fights. I guess you're looking at two of the opposite uh, style fighters. In one case, you have uh, one fighter that, like in the case of Marquez, that uh, has been very protected, has been uh, taken along easily. In the other case, they just send them out right at the beginning. Final seconds now of round one. Marquez and Pinckney, stay with us, we'll be right back. Division Juan Manuel Marquez in the black trunks with the red trim. Daryl Pinckney in the all black trunks. Good first round, I thought, Fernando for Marquez. He is uh, using his boxing skills and they told him more of the same. Uh, Benny Stein told him to use his jab to throw the right hand uh, after Pinckney throws his, uh, his, uh, the jab himself. Marquez has had much better success fighting fighters like Pinkney, guys who come to him, guys who come straight at him, rather than people that he has to chase in the ring, or boxer, or mover types. He's had some trouble with those types, but it could be that Pinkney is, uh, is made almost a order for Marquez. The biggest problem is going to be, is uh, Pinkney durable for uh, Marquez? Marquez is, doesn't go uh, rounds too often, and that's probably, will be his test if it goes the distance. Pinkney is a very hard puncher, keep that in mind. He, up. he has no fear in the ring. He's reddening a little underneath the left eye. Pinkney won the NABF 122 pound uh, championship back in 1991 with a 12 round decision of former Olympian Paul Gonzalez. He's had many big names on his uh, ledger throughout his career. Beat some, lost to some, but he's fought the very best. Marquez has never been down in his career, although he says he's been hurt twice. One of those fights was at the uh, Olympic in the past, but he says that he has never been down. His chin might be tested tonight. Pinkney, very patient, shuffling forward, but Marquez, at least so far, is fighting a very intelligent bout against a big hitter in front of him. Good work to the body there by Marquez. Looking to slow Pinckney up a little if he can. You know, Marquez's dad uh, also fought for another great manager, Arturo Hernandez, legendary from Mexico. And uh, he said that uh, what happened was practically what is happening to Pinckney. His career was just not uh, directed. They had no direction. He just 
lasted at the beginning. Doesn't want the same thing to happen to his son. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, uh, he lost his direction one time when he was climbing a tree when he was 18 years old, Marquez. And it, uh, he fell out of a tree, if you can believe that. And that delayed the start of his pro career by almost two years. From falling out of a tree, he injured his spine, and he couldn't get back into the ring. Boy, but once he did and turned pro, it's been a quick rise up the ladder for Juan Manuel Marquez. Wouldn't you like to know who his doctor is? <laughs> yeah, he's Go obviously pretty boxing. good. <laughs> And even at the beginning, they said that they were not sure that they were going to be winning this fight. To them, it is still a test. Talking about Marquez and his group. Marquez, excellent technique. Holds that left hand out in front of him, fighting well, use, utilizing the jab, fighting an intelligent fight. Pinckney, as we expected, moving forward all the time, but it basically has been unable to unleash any of his bombs uh, so far. They were telling Marquez to move, to jab, and he has been doing that. Let's see what they're telling him now. That's Nacho Beristein with the instructions. More of the same, use the jab. It's Nacho Beristein, Ismael Jimenez, and uh, Juan Manuel's dad, Juan Rafael Marquez. They're telling him that, he, that, that be careful because uh, Pigney is going to be throwing the right hand, move away, and come back with his own right. Jim Waldrop okay. and Mario Francis are doing Franks, give the, Franks, make him the directing in okay. right, Pinkney's corner. Give me another breath. All right. And Pinkney's upset win over Goody Espadas. He was able really to impose his will on Espadas. It was he who controlled the tempo of the fight. He was able to walk through Espadas' blows but he, and uh, land his big shots, but he has been unable, at least through the first two rounds, to do that with Marquez. There's been a large difference in the amount of rounds that these two have fought. Marquez, of course, with only 17 fights in his brief uh, uh, pro uh, career, has fought only 79 rounds. And Pinkney, who has uh, been a professional a long time, uh, well, you see, 268 rounds if you, of fighting. If you look at the last number, 6.0 average and a 4.6 average, that's what I was saying, that Marquez doesn't, hasn't gone the distance too many times. He's, he's only had uh, less than 20 uh, professional fights. Pinkney, he didn't even win a fight till his sixth pro fight. It's a bit of a puffiness in the left side on uh, Pinkney's face. It looks like Marquez has come in with a healthy respect for Pinkney's punching power, and he's fighting a very smart fight. I think that, that, that uh, Nacho Benistein's caution is also transmitted to his fighters. I think that they might even uh, be making him over-cautious. You know, it's interesting, talking to Nacho yesterday about Marquez, he would only call him a good prospect. You know, you, you ask him, does this kid look like a world champion against Hervasio? What do you think? Or, and he goes, well, he's a, he's a good prospect. Got to teach him to walk before he can run. That kind of thing. He he's, must be very conservative in bringing fighters along. I think he is. Basically, what he says he wants to do is to bring this guy along, fight him with every style of boxer, every kind of boxer. So when he goes into a championship fight, it would just be another fight. It would not be a challenge. He was commenting on boxers like Yori Boy Campas and others that go all the way up. 50 fights undefeated. He had to lose out. Good right hand by Marquez. Pinkney a little bit off balance. Stumbled back a couple of feet. It's also puffiness on uh, Marquez's uh, left side of the face near the eye. Now Marquez showing combinations and working to the body as well. One of the things that uh, Betty Stein says is that when you have a fighter that just goes out and uh, goes head to get head against the opposition, their careers are very short. Although Pinkney's manager wouldn't say so. <laughs> I was going to say that hasn't been borne out in Pinkney's case. Pinkney is not getting off. He is not getting his big bombs off the way that he did against the Spotters, the way he's that he did fighting. against Junior Jones. He doesn't have the distance. He's never been, uh, Marcus at, up to this point has never really stopped to fight him. You would, want, would have to wonder what would happen because uh, Marcus can also bang. Final seconds now of round three. Stay with us here. It's fight night on KCAL. Big rally at the end of the round. 
All right, here we go into round four now of this featherweight 10-rounder. You're looking at Juan Manuel Marquez in the black trunks with a red trim and Daryl Pinckney in the all-black trunks. Marquez fighting a very intelligent fight, showing that he can do more than just brawl in the ring. He's showing us something here tonight against the big-time puncher and Daryl Pinckney. He's showing he knows how to use the ring, all 20 feet of it. I think he showed that since the uh, first time that he came uh, up until the States to uh, fight in Vegas. He knew, you can see that he can uh, fight, that he can move, and he was very, very powerful. So far through the first three rounds, I've given uh, Marquez the edge in each. I thought the third round was a little bit closer, though Pinkney trying to come forward, landing some shots, but still a 10-9 edge each round, and apparently my partner here thinks the same. Are we come, are, are we just, should we just merge the scorecards? We, normally we come <laughs> we up with the same. <laughs> Now Pinkney coming forward, landed a left hook from long range. He's gonna have to step it up a little bit. The one thing that you will never be able to take away from Marcus's uh, mind is the fact he's a warrior, and as soon as he hits somebody, he's gonna go after them. You can't take that away from anybody. The uh, killer instinct. Marquez fought his first eight bouts in Mexico, then came to the United States in December of 94. And right here on KCAL, he made his U.S. debut at Caesars in Las Vegas, and he scored really a sensational TKO over Israel Gonzalez that night. I remember thinking to myself, let's see more of this guy real quick. And the foreign boxing has flung very well. You know, another factor that's going to be helping Marcus a lot, the same as Pius, is the fact that both of them have been training at high altitude. And uh, I don't think uh, Pinkney has done that. So he might suffer along the uh, later rounds. Pinkney trains in Florida. Not very high. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Hallandale, Florida. He came in tonight wearing a Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> you can see Marquez going to the body for only the uh, third or fourth time. But Stein says that he doesn't have a, a gym down in Mexico. He says he has a boxing shop that he trains and teaches every single guy like if it was a business. You can really begin to see the bruising underneath that left eye of Daryl Pinckney now. It's getting quite lumpy underneath the eye as we move inside a half minute. To... Marquez working on the jab. I think he was okay. it, it was the, the blow was punched uh, down with the glove by Pinkney. So he might have been anticipating that as we come to the end of round four, Marquez drawing the warning. Stop. Here at the blow, it seemed like a glancing blow. It, well, I think it was low. Yeah, Big. that elbow might have pushed it down a little bit, but it was a good solid punch too for Marquez, who's been doing some very good work to the body in this fight. And that's Marquez in the black trunks with the red trunks. Daryl Pinckney, all black trunks. This is fight night on KCAL. Jorge Paez getting ready to fight in our main event a little bit later on against Julian Wheeler. That should be quite about here this evening. Wheeler, a fine boxer. And, Mark, and of course, Paez on a real roll. But uh, this fight, we're seeing a fighter who's on a real roll, and that's Juan Manuel Marquez, winner of 16 in a row. Should have been 17. Marquez is not a dirty fighter, and uh, he will carry that disqualification, uh, disqualification from the beginning of his career. But what really happened was that uh, he knocked out a fighter that belonged to the uh, Mexican uh, Commission, the doctor there. And they disqualified him after he had knocked him down three times. <laughs> Only in boxing as Marquez with a one-two. That right hand may have been a glancing blow. Pinkney trying to double up with the left hook if he can. Very difficult for the style that Marquez has coming in, going out, of really giving it a Pinkney a target at all. How you getting? Quite. Boy, I tell you, he is right on Marquez. These are not flagrant low blows, folks. They are not in the groin area. It appears to me they are borderline at best, or at worst. And uh, Draculich, to me, appears to be a little hard on Marquez. Well, what's gonna, what's, well, it might interfere a bit on what, uh, on the strategy for Marcus, although they told him since the beginning, go to the head, move, move with the jab, and go to the head, so they're not even telling him to go down into the body area. He's been effective with it. But that might hamper his uh, attack now. 
Pinckney running right into that jab. Look at that bruise underneath the left eye. What a knot that's turning into. And Pinckney has just been on a search and disturb mission since, since the beginning, except he's not finding Marcus. Well, he's searching, <laughs> <laughs> but not destroying. Good left hook and a double left hook and down goes Pinckney. Pinckney immediately gets up a solid punching from Juan Manuel Marquez. Seven, eight. How do you feel? Come to me, come to me. Right. Pinckney seems okay just standing there and uh, Dracula will let him continue. Wow, a succession of left hooks from Juan Manuel Marquez and he moves in to try to finish off Pinckney. Another left hook to the body and that one bothered him. That was too picture perfect, God. Uh, left hooks. And you, you know how, also the speed in which he connected. Marquez is having another scintillating performance the way that he did against Julio Hervasio two fights back. So far he is beginning to, he is dominating Daryl Pinckney and picking it up with each round. Big Dracovic asked him, how do you feel? He says, great, apparently it was uh, like a flash a knockdown, but uh, it, it was very, very effective. Watch these left hooks here, Fernando. Brilliant work with the left hook. There's one, there's another one. Down goes the 29-year-old Daryl Pinckney from the succession of left hooks. Man, he hardly drew that left back. Actually, there were three, three left hooks, and you could see that he hardly drew the left hand even back. You know, at the, at the end, it also appeared that Pinckney went back and uh, also cut his foot somewhere in the canvas, although it was three legitimate good punches that uh, were the ones that are uh, thrown out. It was another warning over by uh, Big Djakovic in uh, Marcus Corner. He's really after him. Round six, scheduled for 10 featherweights. Let's see how Pinckney bounces back if he can. We'll keep an eye on his legs. Seemed to finish up the round okay, but he took a real pasting there from Juan Manuel Marquez. How often do you see triple left hooks? Not too often. Not too often. Yeah. Not only that do you see him, but that connect. That's right. That was accurate punching. In all three landing. And that uh, I gave him a 10-8 round there with the, uh, with the knockdown and have Marquez up 50 to 44. Should have been the same one. I think I scribbled the wrong number there. <laughs> 50 to 44. We'll work on penmanship uh, after the fight here tonight. <laughs> well, I, I wrote it in uh, Spanish. <laughs> it was a number Numbers? <laughs> Gotta find some excuse. <laughs> you know, in, well, in one corner they say that uh, say, well, this was such a test for uh, Marcus and the other one, you know, Pinkley's people said, just another day at the office. Right, that's how Pinkney was looking at it, just another fight. I asked him, well, what do you think uh, when you fought Junior Jones? He goes, well, that was just another fight. I'm happy to say that uh, our partner and man in charge on these telecasts, Tom Kelly, has arrived in the building. So can we now say that el señor está aquí? <laughs> He's making his way over here, and Tom will be joining us momentarily. I think both both people, both of these guys have followed what they wanted to do. Marcus wanted to come out in a box. He has been doing that. And the other side, Pinkney uh, has wanted to find the uh, a range. He hasn't done so uh, done so so far. It appears to me as though Pinkney may not be able to adjust as well as Marquez. That was, I, I think that was a given. I think he knew that. Marcus knew that. It's just a matter of power. Can look at uh, can Marcus power. Uh, Cut down uh, Pigmies. And Marquez is really going to work, putting together beautiful combinations. Marquez following up his fifth round knockdown. Now there's blood also near the uh, nose of uh, Pinkney. He is building on his advantage, Marquez. He had Pinkney down with three left hooks, a triple left hook in the fifth round. And again, dominating this sixth is Juan Manuel Marquez. Pinkney keeps moving forward, but he's just not having success. From the beginning of the fight, he has appeared somewhat frustrated. And look at Marquez from long range. He's just been utilizing all of the ring. And now Pinkney just stayed there. He wants to uh, trade blows. He's saying, come on on, come on in, and uh, let's trade. Marquez wants nothing to do with that. Marquez picking it up with each succeeding round and again fighting a brilliant fight from the geometry of the fight using all angles and all parts of the ring.
seven. Let's take a look at some of the action in round six. And again, you see this brilliant combination punching of uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, who has just completely frustrated Daryl Pinckney here tonight throughout the first six rounds of the bout and hopes to carry that into round seven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure <laughs> to announce that he's taken off his full football helmet, slipped into his boxing trunks and gloves, and Tom Kelly has arrived. This has been an outstanding. I've been watching the last minute and a half of this fight, and Marquez, as you have told uh, the good folks looking in, has really dominated the action I've seen, and um, having had Pinckney down earlier, and Pinckney told us yesterday he came to fight. He's not a boxer, he's a fighter. Well, Marquez has given him, from what I've seen, all the fight he wants. Appears to be uh, very much in control. Quicker and landing uh, the more uh, solid shots. And here we are in round seven of the fight scheduled for 10. And again, I think, Tom, we're, what we're seeing here is a, a fighter who stands in front of Marquez and doesn't really attempt to box and move on him is going to be in for a long night. Well, that would seem to be the case. And, uh, of course, Pinckney, in his defense, told us yesterday he's not a boxer. He is a guy who likes to fight. And if a fellow wants to stand in front of him, he told us, and uh, throw punches, why well, he'll be more than happy to accommodate him. But so far, his game plan certainly has gone out the window. There's a left hand, and he knocks Marquez down with it. So just while we were busy burying Pinckney and all of his talents, why he throws a left hand, and down goes Marquez here in round number seven. Well, you can never get away from the fact that the man has power. He's been waiting and looking for that one opportunity all night. And now he start, tries to press whatever advantage he thinks he's got, and Marquez suddenly comes alive with three or four solid jabs trying to keep Pinckney away from him. Pinckney sensing that he can turn uh, this uh, fight his way in one brief moment. Marquez is in for a fight right now, and Pinckney relishes the idea of standing there toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And what's ironic is that this is the exact time that Marquez should be running, and he's not. No, Marquez, in fact, is standing there willing to trade blows with him. And isn't that interesting, as you point out, Fernando, because it was yesterday that... Uh, uh, Nacho Beristain said we're going to find out just where he is in his career. And, of course, this is the, the moment of truth, so to speak, here in round number seven. And this is why Marquez was boxing in this fight, utilizing it more as a chess match early because he respected the power of Pinckney. But there he tasted the left hook, and you saw what happened. And Pinckney has landed subsequent left hook follow-ups here as well, Tom. It was amazing, uh, just like a bolt out of the blue, a brick coming out of a dark alley, why he nailed Marquez, knocked him flat on the back of his lap, and now he seems to be almost stalking his man, but Marquez steps in and throws a solid right, comes back with a solid exchange, the two of them. The crowd roaring its approval here as we've got the bell bringing us to the end of round number seven, and what a round it was. It has to go, I'm sure, in the book for Daryl Pinckney, who registers the only knockdown of the round, as we go into the corner with Marquez, Nacho Beristain. They're telling him, they're telling him that uh, he has been uh, telling Marquez that when he goes away from the boxer to protect himself, he hasn't yet been doing that. Here's right, another look, look at the knockdown. Marquez, careless there, lunging with that right hand, and he got caught with a left. It was just a careless bit of work by Juan Manuel Marquez. Watch him lunge with the right. Pinkney's nowhere in range, and he leaves himself open for that left hook, and down goes Marquez. And later on in the round, Marquez answering back, but Pinkney willing to fight. Now, this is exactly the fight here that Pinkney wants. Just what you're watching is exactly what Pinkney wants from Marquez. Out they come for round number eight. And suddenly, uh, Pinkney fans here in the audience uh, in the Circus Maximus room of Caesars Tahoe are up shouting their encouragement. And you know, after uh, six rounds of uh, searching, they finally uh, found him. Yes, indeed, they did. <laughs> Pinkney in the black trunks and Marquez in the black trimmed in red. Featherweights, and of course, Jorge Paez still to come in the card in defense of his WBC and Continental America's uh, junior lightweight title. He'll be in against Julian Wheeler, and that promises to be an exciting go. But as we told you when we um, talked about the beginning of this fight, that this could be a very important one to be sure. Pinckney's record is not gaudy, but when you think of the people he's lost to, why, uh, you must realize that, indeed, he can fight, possesses a punch, 
nothing fancy about Pinkney. He uh, is a fighter. He said, you want a boxer, call somebody else. You want a fighter, <laughs> pick up the phone and call me because I'm your guy. On the list of champions, he's fought Luis Mendoza, Chicanero from Colombia. He's fought uh, Ed Idabel Rojas, Jesus Salud. Tracy Patterson, Cardone, Roberto right? Garcia, Harold Warren. I mean, you name it. He's been in with everybody, hasn't he? And he's beaten some of them. Yes, he has. <laughs> he's not one of those guys who's fought everybody but lost to everybody. No. And, you know, still there. I mean, you, no matter what his record is, Tom, you still look at that line-by-line -line record and standing out TKO 3 of Junior That's Jones. Right. That's right. Now, Pinkney's face looks the worst for wear. He's got a pretty good mouse. Discoloration under the left eye, high on the cheekbone. And this is the very quiet eighth round, uh, considering a knockdown was uh, the main bill of fare in round number seven. I think Marquez just trying to go back to the basics here, Tom, and get the fight back at his tempo again. I think again. he's get, taking command of the fight now, again. Well, he uh, jabbing with the left, and he threw that right hand, and Pinckney was backing away from it. It was a similar experience that got him nailed with a, a wild left hook. But Pinckney's going to have to close the gap. There's a margin between them. And when Marquez does lunge with that right hand and Pinckney isn't there, that's when Pinckney could strike. He did in round number seven. And a very quiet round number eight now. It's scheduled for 10, remember. First time Marquez has ever been down in his career, Tom. And I would suspect that's probably the hardest punch he's ever felt in a professional ring. I would also suspect that it will not be the last. <laughs> punch of the last time he goes down. <laughs> the last time he goes down. <laughs> Things have suddenly gotten quiet here with just a handful of seconds remaining in round number eight from an electrifying knockdown in a very, very busy seventh round. Now Marquez landing some nice shots as round number eight is coming to a close and Marquez again regaining for 10. Each fighter has been down, but while well, Pinckney went down in the fifth and Marquez went down in the seventh, the first um, few rounds of this fight seem to have been in Marquez's corner, as you can see. Uh, Rich Barada scorecard. He's got Marquez 78-72, um, and I'm sure he had Marquez winning round number eight. And Fernando scorecard, almost the same, 78-73. Marquez with a five-point uh, advantage over Pinckney. And I'm sure after the knockdown in round number seven, both men had uh, Marquez winning the eighth round. We're here now in the ninth. Still to go is 12 rounds of boxing with Jorge Paez and Julian Wheeler. You know, in both cases, both men got up very fast, very rapidly, and in great shape. And I don't know, because I didn't see round uh, six, uh, whether or not Marquez pressed whatever advantage he'd gained from having Pinckney down, but Pinckney never pressed any advantage in round number eight, Rich and Fernando, after knocking Marquez down. Well, they managed to land a couple of left hooks, but Marquez was so concerned about coming back strong from that knockdown too, Tom, I think that he actually threw the greater volume of punches after that. Yes, I thought he won uh, round number eight, and here we are in round nine. They repeated in his corner that he should be boxing, not, not throwing out one or two punches, but at least three punch combinations. Right hand lands from Pigney, threw it right over the top of the jab. Marquez comes back to the left and the right. Doesn't seem to be a lot of body punching in this fight, at least what I've seen in the last three rounds. They warned uh, Marquez, and so that, that means that it changed his time. They've been warning him for hitting uh, but uh, the referee considered below the belt punches, which I didn't consider them, but uh, I don't count up to them. Oh, oh, big right hand by Marquez and Pinkney. Looked like he was doing a, a full gainer off the low board. He just flopped on the canvas. And now he's back up, down for the second time in the fight, here in round number nine. Tom, a one punch knockdown, a right hand. I, I, that was a hard knockdown. Unbelievable. His feet flew out from underneath him. He landed flat on his back and then bounced right back up to his knees while taking the count. Now the same thing that Marquez did when he went down. Pinkney is taking the offensive. Pinkney forcing the action, although Marquez has put him down not once but twice. And in the closing rounds of this 10-round go, why the action has been fierce and highly competitive. Each man has been down in the last two rounds. Marquez was doing his best work early in the fight with left hooks, but this is the round where his right has come into play. A right hand to score the knockdown, and he's landed two subsequent right hands as well that have stunned Pinckney. 
Well, I don't know what the officials told him about low blows, if indeed they were warning him or not. I haven't seen anybody throw a punch to the body in three rounds. <laughs> Everybody is uh, throwing punches from the shoulders up. And there's the bell bringing us to the end of round nine. And whatever advantage Marquez had, he has gained even more with the knockdown here in the round. As you are in Pinckney's corner, there's people working over with him. But uh, while they're doing that, they're telling him to stay on it, and here's what happens when he does stay on it. Darrell, 10th and final round, you're doing yourself proud. Touch over the right, right hand. The left hand was partially blocked. I thought, let's take a look at it. There it is. The left hand is blocked. It is a one-punch knockdown. The right hand, his right leg just flies out from underneath him. And look, just as quickly, he comes right up to his knees. Coming up, of course, Jorge Maromero Paez continues. He's won four in a row. Makes his first title defense at the WBC Continental Americas Championship. Junior lightweight. Look at the shockingly pink. 128 pounds they're fighting at tonight. That's what he weighed. <laughs> He's dancing. Dancing in pink, shocking <laughs> pink trunks. Leave it to Maromero. Do we have any clue on his costume tonight? <laughs> it's going to be pink, obviously, <laughs> to the business at hand. Round 10 in this featherweight go. Marquez has put Pinckney down twice. Marquez in the black trimmed in red. And Pinckney's corner was telling him, you've got to stay all over this guy. And I think they realize it's a do or die affair. You know that after the knockdown, now Pinkney seemed to be more mad, more angry than uh, hurt. Well, I'm sure that he probably feels he got caught with a sucker punch, but it was a, a left hand had been blocked and a right hand came right over the top of a somewhat wild hook. It was really taking the great circle route and Marquez threw a right hand right over the top of it and knocked him down. You know, we have seen from Marquez now in a couple of fights. We saw in the Julian Wheeler fight. That was a fight in which he was way behind Tom, but he closed the gap late in the fight and was able to stop Wheeler, although on a very controversial call in the uh, 10th round in a fight that he was behind on. But he didn't quit in that fight, and he showed great heart. Here tonight, getting up off the canvas from the first knockdown of his career and a hard knockdown, too. He was down from a solid shot. He has gotten up and controlled the fight after that. He's moving beautifully here in round number 10, his left hand. He threw uh, two, three jabs in a row, uppercuts, threw one to the body, brought another one right back up to the head, jabbing nicely and moving. And of course, as the seconds tick away, why with it, I think, go Pinckney's chances of posting what would be an upset win. Would appear that Pinckney's record is gonna go to a dead even 22-22. Nice work. The left hand by Marquez. Pinckney kind of playing possum for a bit. When you hit Pinckney, chances are you're going to get a response one way or the other. This, this will probably be remembered for Marquez, last, like all those uh, the bullfighters that get thrown down from the bull but finally do, finish the job. May only get one ear instead of two, <laughs> but uh, a win is a win is a win. Well, they, they don't get any ears, they just get an applause and that's it. <laughs> when they get thrown down. <laughs> Pinkney tried to cut off the ring and Marquez boxing beautifully, moving away and jabbing nicely. He just never found him. Good right hand by Marquez. And a nice left and a right. Pinkney covering up. Look how willing a competitor Pinkney yes, is. is, though. He just keeps coming forward, throwing a wild right hand there, right where Marquez was. But Pinkney can't find Marquez now. And Marquez finds Pinkney with a repeated effort with the left hand. Round 10 has just 20 seconds left in it. And this one will be in the books. I guess now the people are going to have to decide if uh, this is still the hot prospect or does he have a way to go? Well, I don't know. Uh, his record is going to go to a gaudy 17 and 1. And uh, he's been in against a tough guy who has some... Uh, Outstanding uh, credentials, and Marquez, as the bell sounds, clearly demonstrating his superiority, I think, here in round number 10. As uh, we will await the judge's decision, he is unmarked, still handsome. Pinckney comes over, congratulates him, and the crowd here at the Circus Maximus Room, Caesars, Lake Tahoe, looks on. We'll be back and find out how the judges saw it. Fight Night on KCAL is being brought to you in part by Dodge. See your Southern California Dodge dealer today. All right, 
up the fights in the book. We'll find out how the judges saw it in just a bit. We're in the Circus Maximus room here, Caesars Tahoe, beautiful Lake uh, Tahoe. Beautiful evening outside, nice and cool and brisk and more than just a touch of uh, fall in the air. Let's go to the ring announcer and find out who won it. Jake, if you will, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecard for this bout. Judge John McSweeney, McSweeney scored the bout 98-89. Herb Santos and Bill Graham each scored the bout 99-89. The winner by unanimous decision, Juan Manuel Marquez. And so it goes, just as we anticipated in watching the closing rounds, although Marquez was knocked down in uh, the seventh, he managed to knock Pinkney down in the eighth and clearly demonstrated his superiority in round 10 to roll to a convincing win, unanimous on all of the judges' cards. We'll be back to find out how Marquez felt about the fight after we see about this message. Mike Knight on KCAL is being brought to you in part by Hyundai and their full line of quality Hyundai cars. Beautiful fall evening outside of Caesars Tahoe, inside in the Circus Maximus room. Why, Juan Manuel Marquez picks up his 17th career victory against but one loss. A unanimous decision win over Daryl Pinckney. Fernando Paramo is with young Marquez. Let's go to the ring. Thank you. Uh, it was the first time that you went down. What kind of an experience is that going down in the, in the floor? La primera vez que te tumban, ¿qué tipo de experiencia es eso? Pues, o sea, que es una experiencia muy buena porque siempre en alguna pelea hay que aceptar alguna caída, ¿no? Y esta me sirvió para para cuando me vuelvan a tumbar ya no se me haga raro, ¿verdad? Esta fue la primera vez que me tumbaron y pues sí me sentí mal. Me, o sea, mal conmigo mismo porque nunca me habían tumbado. So he felt bad uh, about himself, with himself, for, for going down. He says it was, in fact, the first time that he went down. He says that it will also be a new experience for him and a, an experience for the future because probably he would also go down, something we had mentioned in the past. Uh, this was a test. It was considered a test. Do you still consider it a test that you passed? También se decía que era una prueba. ¿Todavía la consideras una prueba que pasaste? Pues sí, fue una prueba. Y no creo que esta prueba sea la más fácil, sino que vienen más difíciles y hay que seguir pasando, hay que seguir este, preparándose mejor para que no suceda lo que sucedió ahorita. Sí, so yes, in fact, it was a, a test, although this was not the final test. It was, it's going to be one of many. There will be some others that are also coming up, will probably be harder. We're going to take a look at the uh, knockdowns and tell us what is going on. That, well, we could, first of all, in the uh, fifth round, el, la caída, sino lo que está pasando. ¿Qué estás haciendo aquí? Tres ganchos. Fueron este, tres ganchos que lo agarré con la, con la mano izquierda, lo sorprendí y pues se cayó a la lona lastimado. He said that he shocked, surprised him with three uh, left hooks. There was another uh, knockdown on the nine with the, with the right hand now. En el noveno hubo otra caída con la, con la derecha. Dinos, hablas de eso. Sí, este, le entraba mucho la derecha. That it was easy to hit him with the right. Ahí lo prendí con la misma mano y se fue a la lona también lastimado. I was able to hit him with the right and then uh, he went down and he was in, uh, hurt. Okay, now you have passed this test. Do you have any idea who would be your next test? Ya pasaste esta prueba. Tienes idea de quién sería tu próxima prueba? Pues no, no tengo idea, pero hay que prepararse mejor porque esta fue una prueba que sí, una prueba que se pasó gracias a Dios y una es una que vale mucho la pena y seguiremos preparándonos para pasar las que vienen. Says, well, they just went past the, uh, this test. Now it's just a matter of going back, getting in better shape for the future, and hopefully also getting and passing those tests. Back to ringside. Thank you, Fernando. Our congratulations.